Nadia here with Big Old Belt. And let's talk about the upcoming BET Plus action thriller, Call Her King. So the movie stars Notori Naughton, Lance Gross, Jason Mitchell, Johnny Messner, Nicholas Turturro, Toby Shulian, Garrett Hendricks, and Siobhan Amasal. The movie is directed by Wes Miller. So the film comes across as like a mishmash of way too many ideas and jumbled execution. It takes considerable inspiration from Die Hard, but more of a courtroom version. And overall, it can't be taken too seriously. It's chaotic, it's messy, it's confusing, and it doesn't know what genre it wants to be. However, it's kind of never boring with its action and occasional thoughtful surprises. So after the courthouse is hijacked by Black Caesar, he's the brother of Sean Samuels, who has just been sentenced. Judge Jada King must rely on her strength and skills to find a way to end the standoff and save the hostages and make her escape. So Notori Norton, we know her from Power. She's best known for her performance as Tasha St. Patrick. Um, and Power was a hit show where she played the lead. And now she plays the lead, uh, Judge Jada King, who's a young Black female judge. She takes great care in her role, as this may be Norton's best performance. We see a little bit more range in her performance, even with her satisfactory attempt at action in gunplay, as King showcases some useful skills attained in martial arts that we saw in the opening credits of the film. There's a lot going on with tons of subplots in just the first 10 minutes or so. Judge Jada King and her husband are having some kind of argument about his lack of work since his restaurant closed during uh, the pandemic. And another plot uh, that starts is she overhears accumulating racist comments. And during a conversation with a colleague, a former uh, flame, Hawkins, who's played by Garrett Hendricks, he suggests that they start an affair. And all this occurs while she sets to deliver the verdict on a high level case that garnered a lot of social media outrage. So she's already super stressed with all these different things going on in her life. There's some important themes um, at play, social injustice, racism, and overall the flaws of the judicial system. Uh, Judge King overhears a conversation with white male co-workers. Colored women do not have the constitution to make the tough choices. They're too emotional. And this sets her up as a sympathetic character that the audience can absolutely root for. She also has to consistently remind her peers to show her a little respect. They keep calling her miss and ma'am, and she reminds them to call her judge. Uh, the case that has her questioning her capabilities is in regards to the trial of Sean Samuels, which is played by Jason Mitchell, who portrays Easy e in Straight Outta Compton. King is notorious for her tough stance on criminals, and despite the pleas of Sean Samuels, she sticks to her guns, metaphorically and literally, in terms of no mercy. Due to a previous lack of judgment in a release of a defendant, Jada will not make the same mistake. Uh, she won't let another killer back on the streets. Although Sean pleads he didn't kill anyone. She she's strict in, in, in um, her beliefs, especially since that other case. And Sam's brother Gabriel, aka Black Seizure, portrayed by Lance Gross, leads a dramatic rescue with his brother. Uh, he's armed with a, a death squad of men and women who march into the courthouse in matching uniforms. They kind of give off like a money heist vibe, uh, like an orderly um, vibe, but this is a former security team. It was kind of weird. A major gripe, a uh, major gripe in the movie was that the break-in was far too easy. There wasn't enough security at, at a courthouse, which is kind of strange. Uh, there were way too many poorly done moments, like Hacker, like Ludacris and Fast X. They're just on a laptop that's not moving and looking like they're doing something. I just want to emphasize that regardless of the failed system, killing innocent people defeated the entire purpose of the movie. Black Caesar comes off as sort of a, like a killmonger zealot. His intentions uh, were good, but he becomes like extremist. And the movie is supposed to be about the failed court system, but this sometimes gets lost in all the chaos and ridiculousness of the movie. The belief that a jury would find it easier to believe that a black man would kill rather than a white man would lie is supposed to be the overall premise. And this should have been the central focus, but it loses its seriousness um, and it loses the impact with all the like with all the like awkward action movie like wannabe diehard emphasis uh director mess willer west miller formed the blacklight entertainment banner and call her king was the first entry under the blacklight imprint and it was supposed to aim to provide opportunities for people of color um whether in front of or behind the camera and miller K miller's dedicated to exploring the ongoing social and cultural problems in america and telling socially relevant impactful stories but he should have stayed in that lane. It would have made a much bigger impact instead of trying to make a judge fight like John Wick. He worked as a civil rights um, trial lawyer and the film would have had a much bigger influence if he focused more on the failed system, the consequences and the repercussions and not like flash bang action. 
However, there was a very interesting scene that really stood out to me, which was pretty well done. Black Caesar decides to put a prosecutor, um, Hawkins, on trial for his role as a prosecuting attorney in his brother's case. And he has an inmate questioning him on the stand. The inmate wears a grill mouthpiece and he's now playing the prosecutor. So the scene was quite funny and it offered like a few laughs. Um, because this time Hawkins was faced uh, with consequences where Caesar was assassinating courtroom staff um, anytime that Hawkins lied about how he handled the trial. So this could have been an impactful scene, but it came off pretty funny. Judge King defends her throne. She rips it up in the courtroom as she infiltrates through Magoons, uh, saving her peers. Miller offered a brief training sequence at the beginning of the movie where we see King working on her martial arts. So that kind of like foreshadowed this moment. Um, but it's weird, like that was supposed to explain how a judge can suddenly become a gun-toting superior combat expert. She learned karate from her dad and now, you know, she learned how to protect herself, but she's skilled enough to take on highly trained security professionals like a special ops, moving like a hitman. Um, there was some decent action with upside down shots, like split screens and blood, but knowing martial arts does not make you John Wick. The CGI and the blood effects were essentially very low budget. But the fight scenes were pretty easy to follow. It helps having veteran action star Johnny Messner. Uh, he steps up and he stands out as a guard who takes on all the infiltrators on his path. And there are some believable performances. Um, Norton, Gross, and Mitchell in particular really stood out. Hendrix, Messner, and Turturro did offer solid supporting work. Aside from the unnecessary action tropes distracting from the central themes, the disconnected soundtrack also completely takes you out. It doesn't fit the tone of the mood. You don't take any of the scenes as seriously, so most of the emotional moments don't necessarily hit. There was a decent, somewhat touching scene between Sean Samuels and Judge King, where he opens up to her emotionally revealing his innocence and his tragic past of his father being um, mistakenly identified. So this would have had much deeper implications if it weren't for the ending, where it revealed he was part of the hijacking. So it was really a plan to get money. So it was an, also an oddly happy ending, it didn't solve anything. Without any context, he's in a suit with other people somehow starting a new life. So they never answered the question, did he originally commit the murder? Was he not implemented in this breakout and homicides at the courthouse? While Miller raised some interesting questions, the movie failed to show the failures of the system. Yes, it did reveal some lies and cover-ups and dealings, but it didn't do anything to change the public appeal. So it kind of defeated its own purpose. But let me know what you guys think. Big old bell.